Hey, so, the plan today? To return to where this channel first began about 10 months ago. You see, it all started with my min-max guide for spring using the Skull Cavern method. Today, I'll go over what it's like to min-max your first three days in Stardew, but there's a catch. I finally installed the Stardew Valley Expanded mod. I'm gonna try to snipe two birds with this one. I selfishly get to check out SVE for the first time, but I'll also get to showcase some cool new strategies that are applicable to Stardew, whether or not you use this mod. If you haven't heard of the Expanded mod by Flash Shifter, it basically adds a metric ton of content to the base game. A larger farm, new NPCs, new locations, new items, and I'm only scratching the surface. So, let's talk about day one and the approach I'll be taking today. I'll throw a disclaimer here because I don't want you to think you must follow this strategy to efficiently play Stardew. This is simply a strategy meant to test the limits of what's possible in the game. I like to think about these things, but acknowledge that this is not a casual way of enjoying Stardew. You do you, I'll do me, and maybe we can learn a couple two, three things along the way. First things first, gathering wood to make a chest. I'm using animation canceling to speed up my tool speed. It's something programmed into the PC version of the game, and Tushi already has a great video on the subject if you want to learn more about that. I'll link it below. As far as goals for the day go, we're going to be exploiting clay farming. This will give us an early head start and provide us enough gold to buy salads for energy, copper ore to unlock the furnace blueprints, and most importantly, the backpack upgrade on day one. With all of that said, energy is my largest bottleneck on day one. If you can't tell by now, the custom farm for SVE is gigantic, and I found a little area for forageables. I'll be eating those to extend my clay farming as long as possible. Okay, so with my setup mostly out of the way, I can begin the clay digging grind. It may not seem like much because clay is only worth 25 gold each, but what if we can guarantee a piece of clay every time we dig? The kicker here is that once you know where you can till up clay, there's a pattern to all future dig spots. In the interest of time, I won't go into all of the details. What you need to know is there is a diagonal pattern for clay that moves each time you dig up a tile. Finding your first clay tile is just a matter of testing your save file over and over, or you can use something like the Map Predictor tool by Blade. Check out my guide for the Map Predictor linked on screen if you want to learn more about that. So what I have going on now is that I knew where my first clay spot was located. I dig that up and then can move diagonally in a Tetris L block sort of fashion to continue finding clay. Because I started at a low part of the pattern, I can dig up 9 total clays before resetting. The cool thing here is that after 9 clay, I know that the tile, two spaces to the left of where I started, will begin the clay pattern again. Pretty neat, right? I'm impressed that I'm still learning things about this game after all these years and over a thousand hours played. I know, I know, I don't always cover the simplest mechanics when it comes to this game, but I hope you can appreciate it nonetheless. Moving on, I keep digging until I'm out of energy and forageables to eat. It's around 2 p.m. and I need to unload the 122 clay I've dug up. I can't sell to Pierre because he doesn't deal in clay, and I need the gold now, so the shipping bin is not an option. But Robin, well, she happens to love clay. My goal for gold when selling this first batch of clay is straightforward. I need 2,000 for the backpack upgrade from Pierre, 75 for a copper ore from Clint, and the rest can go into salads from Gus for energy. That energy will allow me to continue my ridiculous clay farming operation. There's no time for me to meet any NPCs today because I have a lot more clay farming to do. With that said, there's one NPC new to the expanded mod that I will need to meet this week. I won't completely spoil the day four surprise yet, but let's just say that this drastically changes how we can best min-max in SVE versus the base game. Before I get too far ahead of myself, my next goal is to get as much gold as possible to prepare for fishing on day two. Once I'm level two fishing, I'll need 1800 gold for the fiberglass rod. I'll also need to buy bait and trout soups for catfishing on day three. My day one was rounded out with a new haul of over 200 clay. With 4300 gold in hand and already 6700 in total earnings, I'm pleased with how my day one turned out. As anticipated, Clint swings by this morning to give me the furnace blueprints. I triggered this by getting the copper ore yesterday, and it matters because I want to start upgrading my pickaxe tomorrow. My day two goals are pretty simple. Check my mail to trigger the fishing cutscene, utilize the geode strategy on my farm in the morning, 
and then focus on getting level 5 fishing at the beach using the bubbles strat. If you're not familiar with farm geodes, they begin to spawn in rocks on your farm beginning day 2. They are determined overnight and are guaranteed before resetting at the end of each day. This means that I can hit every rock on my farm to see where the geodes are hidden before resetting, and this also applies to coal. Now that I know what rocks to hit beforehand, I'll knock those out before heading off to the beach to fish. I opt to move through parts of the new expanded map to reach the beach. What I haven't told you yet is that I already know this save file has fishing bubbles at the beach today. There are some by the shore in the morning, and then more on the dock later in the afternoon. If you've seen my video on the map predictor, you know that these bubbles mean more fish caught. More fish caught means more experience, and that's precisely how I will get to level 5 fishing today. This is important because I want the angler perk that increases fish prices by 25%. I get level 2 fishing before 5pm, and that's a requirement so I can buy the fiberglass rod before Willy closes. Now, I just need enough gold to buy the copper ore I need for the pickaxe, and to process a few geodes from Clint. Extra gold will go into trout soups and bait. Using the Stardew predictor from Mousy Pounds, I also know what will come out of my geodes when processed. This can be figured out manually by resetting if you don't have access to your save file to use the predictor. The geodes are a great start because I get star shards worth 500 and some copper ore. Most importantly, I need what will come out of the frozen geode as a gift for that NPC I mentioned earlier, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself. With my visit to Clint out of the way, I return to the beach to fish. Bubbles will spawn at 6pm, and that will be exactly what I need to make sure I get to level 5 fishing. There's no need to head home, so I can pass out on the dock and move on to day 3. Day 3 goals are... a little busy. I need more geodes, sell my fish to Willy, smelt bars for the copper pickaxe, get the present I need from the geodes, catfish, drop off the pickaxe, and buy some goodies from the saloon. I'll also need a few more stone in order to craft the furnace, so that's what I'll knock out first. Moving on, I can get some catfishing done while I wait for Willy to open. Fishing for catfish is still the most profitable thing I can do right now. It beats clay tilling by an okay margin, as long as you're good at the minigame, and it's also energy neutral. What I mean by that is that I can eat seaweed or fish while fishing, while I don't gain any energy from digging. For SVE specifically, there are some better fish once you're level 5, like puppyfish and butterfish, but not while it's raining. We can do some of that tomorrow on day 4 because the mines won't open until day 5. Once Willy opens, I can sell off my fishing haul and free up some inventory space. Next on the agenda is to process more geodes and finally get that gift I need. I'm talking about the Fairy Stone, and it's for one of my new favorite characters, Sophia. You see, once we have either uh, a half heart or one to two hearts, I'm not exactly sure how to read the SVE wiki, I'll unlock the ability to purchase quality sprinklers for 4,000 gold each. Gold will be easy to come by, especially when the mines open up, and even Skull Cavern because I plan to get there by the 10th. But farming level 6 to unlock quality sprinklers is a pain. The truth is this, I hate manually watering crops. So yes, I'm excited for this. My day continued with fishing for catfish at a new location west of the blacksmith called Shearwater Bridge. I have some time but need to interrupt the catfishing session to drop off my pickaxe before Clint closes. While I'm out and about, I can sell what I've caught so far and then swing by the saloon. I don't really need the salads for energy or coffee for speed until the mines open on day 5, but my only other need is saving up for the iron pickaxe, which I should be able to cover easily tomorrow by fishing some of the new SVE fish. So that's about it. I can finish my fishing for the day and hope for some good treasure chests. I run back to the farm to sell what fish I have left, and I'm calling it a day. So now it's day 4, I'm level 6 fishing, nearly 7 grand in hand, and have a lot of salads and coffee in preparation for my adventures in the mines on day 5. I have a lot of options for day 4 that I'm still working out, but they'll probably include fishing out butterfish and getting quality sprinklers. Please, let me know if you want me to keep this series going. I love starting new files, and I think this is a pretty cool way of exploring SVE while we wait for the 1.5 update. It takes a lot to prepare these sorts of videos, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Like the video, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.